I talk about tendencies. You have a tendency to lose your focus. You have a tendency to get depressed. You have a tendency to feel anxious. Why do I talk about tendencies? Because these are things we can fix. We can correct them, we can optimize them. And it's very helpful to the client. So, because if I tell the client you're depressed and that solves the problem, well, then it's very easy. You know, and we will be rich for it. We wouldn't have to do anything anymore. You know? So if I go, you're depressed, that's not gonna help the client. That's gonna reinforce the previous notion that they had. And they're gonna marry that diagnosis. And everywhere they go, they're gonna go, yeah, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. Santiago said I'm depressed. And, you know, and everybody tells me I'm depressed. And there's no, there's no solution for me. So you create more helplessness. You're reinforcing the helplessness. But when you talk about tendencies, you give the client hope that it can be reversed. And all of this can be reversed with the appropriate integrative work. So that's very important. And that's uh, T6, how I was talking about. So T6 and FCZC are help that you can train for, for anxiety and trauma. You can do CZ to T6 or FC to T6 training, one of two channels, depending on what makes you happy. You know? And in this case, we would down train all the way from theta to slow alpha, somewhere between three and seven hertz, three and 10 hertz. And I'll show you how we get to that conclusion. Look at that simulate gyrus, see that? Now, I, this is key because I want you to understand something. So, so that's the same view in the middle, right? Everybody can see it. So this is our corpus callosum, right? The corpus callosum. And with Loretta, we can see what are the networks that are activated. So. This is the dorsal part, which is this one, this metal bar is. That's the dorsal part of your anterior cingulate cortex. That's your cognitive production. So anything that's dorsal is cognitive, okay? Anything that's ventral, it's affected, okay? I think, therefore I get angry. I think, therefore I get scared. I think, Therefore, I feel sad. So for this person, the cognitive and the affective are a problem. It means that she cannot control her thoughts, and she cannot control her, re her um, affective mm -hmm. reactions to them, which could be a sign of oppositional defiance. It could be a sign of depression. It could be a sign of anger. And it's all correlation. Remember, correlation does not mean causation. The fact that this is presenting itself here doesn't mean that that is the case, okay? It correlates with, it's not causing it, okay? So, but we can make the case for depression here, we can make the case for OCD. I mean, we could call it any name we want. But what's important is the underlying and the, and the outwardly shown behavior. And when we correct this, we correct function. And when we correct function, we correct health. Uh, this is a male who had a facial injury. When he was 14, he got into a fist fight. Somebody punched him in the nose. They broke his nose. And when he, it, when he got into the hospital for the surgery, he couldn't, he couldn't feel the nose. And he, got, he went into panic. And um, he, when he breathes, he goes into panic because he cannot feel his nose. And when he was 15, he was holding a ladder for his grandfather. He let go of the ladder and his, and his granddad was seriously injured. And everybody in the family accused him of almost killing his grandfather. So you have two traumas within the span of one year that are causing that. And look at that. Slow quick burst, specifically in the parietal region. See the amplitude is higher uh, temporal and parietal. Amplitude, the, the brain waves are higher here. See that? They're higher here than they're here. Now, there's high amplitude, slow brain wave amplitudes here, but they're higher in the back of the head. And that's a form of dissociation. So he's dissociating. And how does it manifest? He loses his focus. 
You know, it's the person you're talking to and they're looking at you and you go, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you paying attention to me? And they go and they get out of the trance and go, oh, sorry, what were you talking to me? And that's, that's right? So is it ADD? Well, it's ADD-like, right? So uh, there's a tendency from him to dissociate space out because look at, look at the synchronization here and see how they get desynchronized afterwards. So he's off and then he comes back to reality. But when we look at the EEG throughout, that's the pattern. He gets dissociated, he comes back to reality. He gets dissociated, he comes back to reality. And we're going to help. This is exaggerated, but that, that gives you an idea. Look at the anterior cingulate cortex, T6 again. The right brain, which is the social emotional brain. So this is somebody who's withdrawn socially. He doesn't go out too much with people anymore. He's become become um, more of a isolated person and you start seeing all the consequences. Uh, this is a lady who got pregnant when she didn't want to and had a miscarriage. So all the stress car has caused her to lose the baby. And you see some beta spindles here. And then again, I know that you go, yeah, well, yeah, right, beta spindles. So it looks the same to me. But we'll, we'll, we'll look at them into detail separately. Okay, that's just the intro. And here's the base spindles, C3 and C4, T6 again. So T6 is a recurrent thing for a lot of trauma clients. So T6 is a good spot to, to train neurofeedback if you want to do some kind of protocol. What do you train down and up train? We'll see. And that's the story with that. So that's what it looks like in the brain. So we have lunch at 12.30, Paul. Break for lunch at 12.30, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a stress profile demo, okay? We'll break for lunch, and when we come back, you will practice the, you will practice the uh, stress profile, and then we'll go into the full neurofeedback with the, with the practicums, okay? So um, I would like to have a volunteer for the stress profile demo, somebody who wants to do it. It's not invasive. We're not going to reveal personal information, so I don't know if if I can use somebody for that. We got volunteer. Okay, sir, come on up. So what I want you guys to do is to stand up and come down with me because I'm gonna show you how you place the sensors. I want you, if you wanna take pictures, you can take pictures. If you wanna shoot video, it's fine to shoot video. Mm -hmm. uh, just don't show his face, please. Mm -hmm. So we keep it confidential. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll do the analysis. I'll show you how it's done and then you can practice yourselves, okay? So come over here, please. And can we get the uh, lights up front, please, Paul? Turn the lights. All right. What's your name? Willie. Willie? Yeah. Right, Willie. Have a seat, please. Uh, if you can take your switch, please. 